But uh, we'll just start off with the under-20 final. Cork 2-22, Offaly 3-13. There's no doubt that the game was decided either side of half-time when the Rebels went on a blitz of 111 to a point. And look, let's call a spade a spade. Offaly were physically beaten up. And, you know, I see some people kind of joking, saying that Offaly put out the minor team and Cork put out the under-20 team. And, you know, what did you expect that when Cork go out there, they're going to see, OK, these Offaly lads are much smaller. Let's just rough them up a small bit. And look, we you look, you've called you've called out Cork before for lacking the manliness, but by God, they fairly decided we're going to show awfully what me, being a man is all about. Well, they're they're twenty. It was a lot of twenty-year-olds against probably a lot of seventeen or eighteen. Well, for no one forced you to pick seventeen-year-olds. I, I, you're going you're going down the, you're going down probably the wrong road maybe this morning. Um, in that in, well, in that respect, Cork were, in the eye of the beholder. Cork Have you were, no nineteen-year-olds to throw out? There was a few 19 year olds, there was a few 20 year olds playing as well. There was only six of last year's minor team, which just probably, uh, I would say, even looking at Cork coming out, a completely different physical prospect. Like, I was even looking at, there was a number 17 coming off the pitch, and I was just thinking, this lad's only about 5'7, five, 5'8, five, but he's all there. Like, he's, mm. you know, he's all there, little, all kind of little tanks. Um, that's our lads probably just aren't at the stage of their physical development at the moment. It's not to say that they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing because they know they are, but they're just not there. Like if, like if you put Screeny beside Ben O'Connor, like he'd he'd eat him physically. That's not to say that, like Screeny had his hands on everything good that Offaly did in the first half. I think he did new marker by the by the twelfth minute even. But Cork Cork probably did kind of rough up Offaly to, to some respect. They use the you don't roughing up is one way of putting it. You use if you have a physical advantage over the opposition, you try and use it. And they definitely did. And I'd say a lot of those big physical hits took their toll definitely as the second half went on. Like you and me both saw Screeny before half time. He looked kind of a bit bad. He was down in his hunkers for a couple of minutes. That's probably the, the you know, the physicality probably taking his toll. Um obviously we'll probably chat about Conor McEgan in a minute. He had to go off at half time with I think uh Leo Connor said suspected broken ribs, but just on the game itself like there's no doubt that Cork were the better team. They definitely were, and you know I feared before half time. I was kind of praying for half time to come, and I thought get 15 minutes in, maybe regroup a small bit. But I think Cork had gotten five of the last six points before half time, and then it was just nine seconds into the second half. Mullins goes down through the middle, and then they get the next six points, and the game is kind of done. But it could have gotten really, really ugly at that stage. Been eleven down, that could have been a fifteen or sixteen point beating, and it wasn't. And a credit to Ireland for that. It ended up at six points. Um, like six points was probably not a fair reflection of the game in in, in one instance, which is good from an awfully point of view and definitely good for the future because if you'd taken a bit of a pace in there, it would have been particularly demoralising. But I think I think they went out under shield, even though as I said, they were totally overmatched physically. I have to say. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I'm just going to go through a couple of comments here. Patrick Coleman says, hard luck to Offaly. Cork were just that bit bigger and stronger than Offaly. Cork were just better able to take their points in the second half. Richard Good says, Vernie, you got outmanned by Cork. Hashtag karma, hashtag steel. <laughs> Those awfully slash Vernie think hurling should be a non-contact sport. So basically, you've been slating Cork for years about not being men. They couldn't win a, a winter All-Ireland. Cork senior it. The Cork senior team, I, I add. Yeah, you've been slating them for years. And they've, like, they fairly gave you a direct answer with that performance. Well, the Cork under twenties gave me gave gave an answer to. Well, I don't know. I don't well, maybe it was Cork. a message to you, considering everything you've had to say about Cork <laughs> I, over the years. I, I highly, I highly doubt they were thinking about me. In the, any teams, respect. the teams will use anything. But you'd have to say that for maybe questioning their spine in recent years, like they were just not letting awfully true. And like Cormac Egan was taken out, Screeny was taken out after two minutes. Dan Burke was pulled down. By, by Owen Downey in the second half as well. Um, for a county uh, that's probably been claimed not to be cynical enough, they probably went a small bit to the other side yesterday, but they got the job done. Like um, some, I heard someone made a comment that you know if Michal Mullins had done the same, done the same going through the Cork defence, then he would have been unceremoniously taken down, and he probably he probably would have been. So in in response to Ben O'Connor's comment that Offaly would have done the same thing if they could, I I'm not sure. I'm not sure if they would have had because they but didn't. they should. Yeah, they, well they probably should have. Um now that brings us to a, another debate about like it's one thing, you know, saying, you know, cynical tactics or whatever, but and I take my Offaly hat off here. To me that was a blatant red card for a head a head high tackle on Carmack Egan that 
probably left him not really been able to feature for, for the rest of the game. And as well as that, I'm not picking out players, I don't want to pick out players, I have a go up players. But the same player was involved with the incident with Adam Screeny at the start, where he, he cut him out as well. There's no point in saying any different. And that was the yellow card. So if that was the yellow card there, and even if it wasn't a red for the, the tackle on Egan, that's a, that's a red card and a player's gone off. And I'm not saying that it would have changed the game, but well, it would have yes, changed the game in some respects. But like Cork were still the better team. But if they had to play with 14 men for 48 minutes, as I feel they should have had, and I don't think I'm the only one that, that, that thinks that. I'd say you probably feel that as well. But like that's just, um, to me, I think there's a duty of care to uh, from referees as well to protect players. And some off the players were getting... Killed illegally yesterday, and okay, it's one he's wrong now. The referee, well, he's wrong not to he's wrong not to send off. Uh, well, you know, the full, the full back. Like I think the Shane Kingston one, and look, it's difficult because you're talking about you know young lads here, and like you know they're all putting their heart and their soul on the line and all that kind of stuff. But look, it's harsh, but he should have got a red card. I'd no doubt about that. Also, when Screeny was going through to feed the ball to Egan in that incident, yeah. Owen Downey whipped across him, and because I suppose. What went on then with dealing with Kingston? Downey was nearly forgotten about. Um, he should have got a yellow card for whipping across. And, and then later on, yeah. rugby tackled was a standard. Dan Dan yeah, so he should have the, been. You know what I mean? That, I just think I I think there was a couple of incidents there that weren't dealt with in time. Like to me, that foul on screen, as I said, should have been a yellow, and that would have led to another yellow. And I'm not. This is not, and it's not sour grapes or anything like that. It's just there were a couple of pretty bad tackles that I felt were dealt with um quite leniently but that's that's just and listen Leo O'Connor probably felt the same with with the comments that he made after which he described as absolutely cynical hurling um and he was mainly just talking about some of the incidents in the first half and I uh, listen like some people would say it's sour grapes or whatever like he he is skin in the game he wants he wants his team to win like I I prefer for him to say that than to say nothing and just you know what I mean and he kept going back and saying Cork were the better team and I can't emphasize enough that Cork were the better team but there were a few incidents that that we weren't happy with and uh, I think he was speaking for most Offaly people and probably most of the squad as well with what he brought up. Uh, Jim White says for twenty years Cork have been putting screenies on the field because we believe the object was the ball. However, in a modern game, the object is the man. The ball is secondary. Hurling loss. Hurling's loss. I presume he's saying. Um, which is kind of interesting. Like, is this a sea change for Cork? Because we keep talking about it, um, that they didn't... Have they finally learned to become men in Cork? Is the coaching directed towards being men first and hurlers second? Like, because the senior team, there seems to be a bit of a sea change with them. A little bit. I mean, obviously, they didn't get... That'll take to time, too, like, obviously. Yeah. 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 And I mean, not all of these players are going to come through straight away. But do do we feel now that there's a sea change within Cork? Three under twenties in the last four years as well. They're going to have a huge pick now. You know, and one of the things would be, yeah, they're going to have a huge pick of the same type of players. So just because they've got lots of them, it doesn't necessarily mean that they've got stars everywhere. Losing Ben O'Connor is obviously a big one as well, because he is someone that you could see physically stepping up straight away. Probably even this past year, if he wasn't playing so much rugby. But it, are we looking at a sea change with the sort of hurling that Cork are going to play? Yeah, well, I, 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 I'd say on the evidence of what we saw yesterday, they, usually teams are a reflection of their coaches or a reflection of their manager. You've, you and I have both spoken to Ben O'Connor where he's fairly forthright in how he thinks hurling should be played. And That's great, isn't he? Yeah, like he, he, he tells it as, as he sees it and he wants it hard, physical and manly. And his team definitely play with a robust style, you'd have to say. The seniors... um. We definitely saw evidence this year that there's definitely something brewing, I would say, in time as well. Just a comment there that I want, that I want to read out here. Um, Catnap says, Cork senior, senior team have been getting killed illegally for years and Bernie calls the seniors soft. Now, like, I'm talking about, you know, a lack of tackling in the forward line for, for years, which a, a lot of people would see. I'm talking about teams racing down through the middle of their defence and not getting, you know, no one laying a glove on them. That's what I'm talking about. I'm not saying every player that goes out or anything like that is soft, far from it. But they've, they've played in that sort of a manner. Uh, the way the 20s played yesterday would suggest that things are probably changing in Cork and that they realise maybe that they play need to play a little bit differently. Darla Hans says, but if it was the uh, Offaly fellas hitting like that, you'd be full of praise. Come here, let's talk I wouldn't, about... be, I wouldn't, wouldn't be full of praise for um, a lot of cynical things. And once that tackle was put in on, on Egan, I'd be thinking, we're going to be playing with 14. 
and, and that we're living really on the edge. And I just think a couple of those incidences weren't dealt with as they should have been and had a little bit of a knock-on effect later in the game, like the Downey one and like the, the Kingston one. But I'm the same as you. I don't like to see lads being sent off or given the line or whatever. But if you, you, know, if you, do, the cri- if you do the crime, then you have to take the punishment that befits that, you know? It's a great court team, though. Like, I mean, let, let's if we, if we just leave that aside, William Buckley, like some of the scores yeah. he had. And like, I remember, I think just after Ben Cunningham got the goal early, in, sorry, Dermot Healy got the goal early in the game, he did a crossfield stick pass over to, to Jack uh, Leahy, or Lahey, as I'd say, and just trying to force a goal situation again. So there's goals on the mind of these players. Ah, uh, Shane, they, they wanted they wanted five or six goals yesterday, didn't they? Like mm. they every time they got the ball, they were thinking, how can we break the line? How can we force a goal opportunity? And I suppose when you have that pace and that physicality in the forward line, you're literally looking at every forward and you're thinking, he has the power, he has the pace, and he has the skill to take on his defender here and go for the go for the throat. And they did at times. And they were like obviously I was on the receiving end of it, but they were they are brilliant to watch as well. Um and they you know, when those opportunities when they forced those opportunities at the start of the second half, they went for the throat straight away and put the game to bed and that was that was it really awfully fought to the end, but you know, there were net it was ne- it was a bridge that they were never gonna they were never gonna be able to get over. Yeah. Awfully you're gonna win it next year though, aren't they? The under twenty. Apparently, I'm being told that Cork are even stronger next year. They'll be without Ben O'Connor. They, they won the minor in 2021, and apparently the crew that's coming next year is stronger again. Um, to be yes, to be honest with you, we definitely can't be counting our chickens in Offaly because Galway will probably have a right good under-20 team next year. Kilkenny will probably have a right good under-20 team. Um, <coughs> uh, yeah, well, I'm only talking about Leinster, for, for first, and, first and foremost. <laughs> but um, apparently Cork are fairly tasty for next year as well and just on Ben O'Connor as well uh, the manager he's probably made a fair play to be senior boss down the line as well I know it's something that he's probably always wanted in the great success with Charleville and great success with Middleton as well uh, and he's, he is he's fairly he's fairly forthright in what he feels and look at the t- look at the backroom team he had just off the top of my head Ronan Kern Anthony Nash Gerald um, Regan Terence McCarthy you know what I mean like uh a bit of a kind of a who's who there and uh he's probably making a bit of a play to be potentially maybe the, the next senior manager whenever that is yeah um Raymond Gilburn not really sure what the context is here but I've never dunked a biscuit in a cup of tea nor a mug of coffee and I think it's your last Raymond I'm not really sure the context but it's definitely your last catnap Lads, you always laud and applaud on the edge hurling. The on the edge, big hitting hurling is 100% the reason we see so many of these head high tackles. Bay for blood and you get it. It's a fair point and I do love physical hurling. Um, And if that's taken out of the game, it's a problem. But like, if you kind of gamble by putting your body in full steam ahead and you miss for whatever reason, you're going to have to live with the consequences. Just because a referee might not get the decision right in certain days. Yeah. That doesn't mean that you're not still running the risk every time you mistime something. Well, like, I just thought the elbow was up for that incident as well. Like, and it was, a, uh, listen, there's, there's, there's boys, there's boys hopping off me in the comments here. Do I still love physical hurling? I absolutely love it. But re, in recent times, and I've highlighted several of them, there's been some head high challenges that are borderline crazy. Like, and someone's going to get really badly hurt. And some Carl McGeegan obviously got badly hurt yesterday. And I said, I used to get in the game with Offaly, and I thought it should have been a red card. But it, I, it's something I just don't like. I just really don't. I, I, no, I love physicality, I love lads getting hits and stuff like that. But there's nothing physical, there's nothing physical about that, about a lad getting peeled in the head. Is that phys, that's not physicality. Like, no, I'm not that, that. You know, I mean, that's not physicality. Physicality is. You know, getting in, getting your shoulder in, uh, holding a lad up or whatever, stopping all his momentum. Uh, a good, tough, kind of honest play. I don't think there's anything physical about that. Now, that's not to say, like, you know, if I was playing or you were playing, would we if I don't, I'm not saying your man did it on purpose or anything like that either. You, would, you will do whatever you can to stop a player coming through. But I think that's different. There's a difference between that and physicality, between you know, potentially taking the lad's head off. Okay, well, we've got a comment coming in here from the Down Hurling manager, uh, Ronan Sheehan. So we'll just bring it up on screen here uh, just to get his feedback. So interesting debate underway on our game with Shane and Michael about the tackling in the under-20 game. The head-high challenge is a real issue for the GA now, but teams are effectively copying what they have seen happen at senior level and get away with it. Time for change. Like, what change can happen? Is it, is it getting to a stage now, and obviously this can't apply across the levels, where you need a VAR type thing? Like, for example, yesterday, 
there's no reason that you couldn't have somebody who kind of sits in a Hawkeye type uh, setting, you know, in a booth and then feeds down to the referee, you know, hold on a second here. Obviously the player's getting treatment, so the game stopped anyway. Look, that was a, a red card tackle. Yeah, well, the young players are right in the top of it as well and probably need to have more response. Like it was, it was you know, it, it out happened yet. at 100 miles an hour, so it happened for 100 mi miles an hour for absolutely everybody there. Like you and I were up in the, the gantry and you've got that beautiful view and we're sitting down, we're not sprinting around like the referee is and getting more tired. But I thought straight away red card, you did too. Obviously, you know, you're, you've got your, your green, white and, and gold glasses on to some degree, but I looked at it straight away and I thought red. But like, what's stopping the information being fed down? Or is that going too far with... Uh, with technology um yeah yeah i suppose if if there is somebody looking at something or has a better you know sight or something even if they just see it in normal time like whether it's the referee's assessor or whoever it is they probably i just uh, I, I think we're going down a real dangerous area with this these head high challenges i think there's nearly there's one or two in every game now at this stage and as, as, as Roland said there, when people see it happening at senior level and lads getting away with it, like when was the last time somebody was sent off for, like we talked about four or five head high challenges in the championship already this year and no one's really been sent off, no one's been sent off for any of them. So if they're getting away with it at senior level, I think it probably will potentially bring in a, ru a rule change. Um, and, But like rugby goes anything around the head and it's a red card. And if someone does it, they do it. And I'm not saying we're rugby or we need to copy rugby's rules. But I, I just think I just think that we're going to end up with with different lads having potentially uh, life change and consequences as a result of one of these. We're getting away with it at the moment, mm. but we're not going to get away with it forever. And there's no point yeah. saying any different. Because I would have always thought, growing up and even up until recent years, that you play a hurling, the risk of you know, like people who don't know the sport would look at it yeah. and think, "Oh my God, you're going to get your head taken off and all that kind of stuff." Hurley's swinging right beside you and all that. But most people know if you haven't played and you go in. You're going to not know how to enter a tackle situation and you are going to get badly hurt. But if you know how to play, you know that the best way to avoid getting smacked by a hurley is actually, or, you know, get hurt is actually get quite close to the player rather than staying back and sort of getting, you know, that's when you can get whipped by the hurley in a way. There's other ways you can, of course, as well. But I think the onus has to be on the tackler because at the moment, the, the vagueness of the rules means that you can burst the lad out of it. And we've seen it across the, uh, across the board this year. Um, Seamus Flanagan, Groat Hegarty, the incident with Rona Maher. And I noticed yesterday when I tweeted that it should have been a red card that I had a Cork person on to me saying, what did you say with the Rona Maher thing? And I said, well, at the time, I instantly tweeted that should be a red card. So I think I, I'd like to think I've been fairly consistent with this. But it probably has to get to a stage whereby the player has the onus is on them to make sure that they don't connect with the head. And it can happen that a player who's in possession miscontrols it or stumbles or something like that and an honest attempt at a tackle which is designed to bury a lad you know with a shoulder a fair shoulder that it becomes mistimed because the other the, the ball carrier stumbles but again the onus is on the player who's throwing his body at somebody 100 miles an hour not on the guy who's in possession of the ball yeah there's two there's two duties of care one from the tackler um, to the player in possession and I think there's a duty of care from the referee then to protect players also as well that's my own opinion on it there's a couple of another co a couple of comments in there just about uh Cork people how they want uh, how they want apologize for potentially you know bullying their way to a title and and they shouldn't there was a couple there, there are there are a couple of incidents that we're talking about I don't think they well they might have fundamentally changed the game as small but there's no doubt that Cork were the better team they were probably you know the physically bigger team probably the more skillful team as well re realistically um and it's hugely exciting from a card point of view i would say take out you know the head high challenge that's really the only one i'm talking about that that maybe the screeny tackle at the start that's all it like if a lad is pulled down if Owen downey pulls down dan burke and that's within the rules and there's no black card at under 20 then more more luck to him like you're playing you're playing within the rules you're using the rules to your effect um but the fact that they played a lot more physically a lot more robust um i just it never felt like we were going to really be able to break the line because cork were going to be there and they were going to have lads there to do whatever they needed to do so that's definitely a good sign for the future in cork and like you're looking at michael mullins you're looking at ben cunningham william buckley uh jack lahey and a couple more and you're thinking yeah these boys could make an impact in the next two or three years at senior level you'd be surprised even looking at ben cunningham maybe how he wasn't playing maybe this year and they obviously have Owen downey like when you can put out Owen downey as sweeper um like your senior star 
at sweeper. And I think is it the first game he played all year under twenty? Was the All Ireland final? I don't know. He was looking to be the enforcer too, wasn't he? Yeah, he was going yeah. around with an attitude. Yeah, yeah. Oh, listen, um, and I, I, I'd say it was bet into them beforehand that we're not going to let these lads kind of walk through or something like that. And to be fair to them, they didn't. Yeah, uh, column lines blind spot says that uh, you're in a tough spot, Bernie. Everything you say will be taken as sour grapes, but we all know Cork <laughs> were a disgrace yesterday. Uh, on the edge says, you're either operating outside the rules or you're not, Michael. Where is the line you're talking about? Does it move where you want it to? But I, I'm not sure what he means. You're like, under pressure today, aren't you? People yeah, are coming well, for you. Nah, well, it's just like because they, they're they're taking Leo O'Connor's comments and thinking that that's for, for everybody and all. No, they've been waiting in the long grass for you for a long time because <laughs> of your your hatred of Cork. I just uh, the line is I'd say it's very very simple. The line is a head high tackle. To be honest with you, that's the line. And once you once that's the far sided line. I'd say nearly anything else is the other side of the line and within the rules. That's mm. all. 